Hello everybody, Andrea Majewski here with Dental L. So a lot of you know by now that I do have my own dental hygiene mobile practice and I've been getting a lot of emails, a lot of comments, a lot of messages, which is awesome, um, about just basically how I got started and how you can get started also. Because even if you've been starting to look into it a little bit, you will quickly hit roadblocks everywhere because it's very overwhelming. It's very, very overwhelming because you don't know where to start. You don't know who to talk to. Well, I make everything really easy. So as you guys may know, I have been tutoring for about, well, since 2005. So a long time now. So I teach dental hygiene students and dental assisting students how to pass the board exam. Um, I do also offer tutoring help for those students who are still in school and need help with their classroom tests, exams, essays, everything. So teaching is just something that I love to do. So it only made sense that I teach what I know and what I know is how to open up your own practice, um, specifically your dental hygiene mobile practice. So I'm going to be teaching you guys 10 steps um, to get started with your practice like tomorrow. So I'm not saying how to start thinking about it, but to really get started now. Um, if you guys don't know me by now, I am very, very motivated. I am very ambitious. I don't believe in the word no. <laughs> and I want to kind of instill that into all of you as well, that if this is truly something that you want to do, but you just don't know how to get started, let me help you. So I do teach this fully inside um, the Mobile RDH um, um, Academy. It's a full online course, but just to keep it simple, let me kind of start you off with 10 steps to your practice, okay? So let me just change the slide here. So, um, and I do have this um, PowerPoint and it can be converted into a PDF also if you would like to um, keep this. I will leave the link for you guys on the bottom so then that way you have something to look at and something to kind of read into later as well. So as I mentioned, this will help you with pretty much the the overwhelm of you know you want to start your own, your own practice. You don't really know how to get started. You don't know if you can. You don't know if it's something that you can afford. So all of the, I'm not sure, but this is something that I'm thinking about. So I will help you with all of that. So step one is the cost, okay? So the first thing that I, that I would like you guys to know is to start looking up the costs of what you need, what you want. And this means looking up costs of, of um, um, instruments, you know? So start with the, the simplest of things, make a list, and you will probably make a couple lists probably even more than a couple because as you go down the list and then as you think about, okay, well, what do I do in my typical dental hygiene appointment at the dental office? Okay, then what do I do if, if it's my own office? You know, how will I sterilize the instrument? So you have to think about all of that. So think about the cost of everything. Just write it down on a piece of paper from step one, step two, just think of the cost of everything. So Think of, do you want to buy a sterilizer for your house? Do you want to instead save the money and ask a dental office if you can use their sterilizer once a week, twice a week, whatever. With a sterilizer, you need to think about spore testing. So you need to think about all of that as well. It's not a small cost. You need to think about masks. You need to think about uniforms. You need to think about instruments. You need to think of saliva ejectors. You need to think about do you want to use a Cavitron or a Piezo? Do you want the intraoral camera? Do you want this? Do you want that? So as you can imagine, there's a ton of things. Um, if you need help with this, let me know because I go through actually an entire list of what I have, the exact list that I had used when I was calculating my costs. Now, as I mentioned here, it can be tricky because even if you go online, let's say um, if you go to any dental supply company, there's Patterson, there's um, um, Maxill, um, Henry Shine, 3M, you know, all of those. You can't just simply look up a price. It would be nice, but you can't. You need to have your own account 
to be able to see those prices and 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 and, uh, and how do you get your own account you have to call the rep you have to set one up so you might not know the exact prices of some of these things but it's good to have an idea um, a good thing to do to kind of start with this is to look on Amazon of course you can't look at Amazon for everything like if you were to look up a sterilizer from Amazon you're not going to find anything but just kind of look up prices that way um, e even if you go on um, Kijiji I did this also was I would look up the price of a used um, statum used instruments used um, cassettes you know all of that so you can find prices that way too um, I prefer to purchase new everything only because I spoke with my accountant and, and for tax purposes, it just made more sense for me and I can get more tax credits buying new. Um, but that's kind of another story for another day. Um, because as I mentioned, I do own my own tutoring company. So that kind of puts me into another tax, um, tax bracket where for you, it might be more cost effective to buy used, but for me, it would not be. But anyways, as I said, that's another story for another day. So think about pricing, ask, you know, dental assistants, ask just anybody and try to come up with how much things might cost. Okay. So step two is make some calls. And this is when you want to talk to the reps of these companies. So what I did was, um, I kind of looked at to see, okay, for most of my dental supplies, where can I purchase those? And then typically where you purchase your instruments and your sterilizer will have to be from another company. It would be nice if these companies did it all, but that's just not the case. So look up where you need to purchase what you need and go from there. Like for an example, for my portable compressor unit, I I had gotten that from a, a completely different company that does not sell like dental uh, supplies, instruments, none of that. So I had to know where to look for that. Um, and I do um, help you with all of that if you need help. So please just let me know. Again, this is probably the most overwhelming part is, okay, this is what I need. Where do I buy it? You know, so I can help you with that if you need help. But make some phone calls, okay? Because you will have to speak to these reps and they will be able to give you a price. Okay, next, step three, call the bank. So once you start to have an idea, it will not be, be perfect, but when you have once you have the estimate of how much things will cost, call the bank. If you had the money, awesome, but I most certainly did not. So I did have to take out a small loan, um, a small business loan of $30,000. Now, in, now initially I thought that I would only need $25,000, but that was because I didn't look at how much things cost first. I just kind of had an estimate. Um, it was the $10,000 sterilizer the you know four thousand dollar piezo or two thousand dollar piezo shoot now i can't remember that kind of put me over the top but even with the piezo i didn't end up buying that one thankfully because i just thought it was too crazy to have to spend thousands of dollars on a piezo scaler so i didn't end up doing that anyway but it was nice to kind of have some extra money to work with um so yeah so i took out a thirty thousand dollar small um business loan but it doesn't happen overnight. You have to make appointments. You have to bring the paperwork. If you don't have everything you need, you have to make another appointment, bring more paperwork. Oh my goodness. It was the most annoying thing. It probably took about a month. Um, my credit card that I use only for the business took about two months, which was insane. I had no idea why it took so long, but I was kind of like, okay, I would like to order things like yesterday. So I just ended up using my own credit card anyway, and then transferring everything over. Um, but it would have just been so much easier and keep things more organized if I had my, my actual um, business credit card, but it took like two months. So call the bank so you don't have to wait as long as I did. 
Okay, next one. Step number four is the ordering. So now that you have an idea of how much things cost, you have talked to different companies, you have the money, now you can order, okay? Um, keep in mind that sometimes these companies have, uh, you know, buy two and you get one free. That's a pretty good deal, especially on things that you know you will be using you know a lot of um so just think of things like that um if you're lucky to be around the time of a dental um convention things are always on sale unfortunately i had missed the mark on that but come i believe it's in may i will be attending the um, convention in toronto for sure because i will probably need to restock on pretty much everything so i'm excited about that Okay, step five, you want to design and advertise. I find this is one of the hardest things for a lot of people, especially if you're not technology inclined, I guess is the right word, um, or not the right word, I don't really know, but if you're shying away from making a website, having to use social media, having to talk about, yes, I'm starting my own dental hygiene practice. If you're you know, not comfortable doing that, I say snap out of it and get comfortable because you are missing out on so much if you're not advertising, if you're not telling people that you have started your own dental hygiene practice, even if you're just thinking about it, you know, there is no harm in saying, um, you know, hey guys, I'm so excited, come, you know, mid or summer 2019, I will be starting my own dental hygiene practice. Stay tuned. There's no harm in just saying that. So then people can can start to think about it and say, oh, she's starting her own dental office. Oh my goodness, like how does that work? You know, get people talking. I'm not saying that you have to post five times a day every single day on um, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Pinterest, but you need to start advertising. And of course I can help you with that. I'm the advertising queen. I love to advertise. I post all the time. And I, even before I started my hygiene practice, I, I had lined up at least 11 patients. I, um, I think even 12. Um, and that was just from advertising and letting people know like, Hey, the holidays are coming. If you would like your um, your teeth whitened, I can help you with that. You know, I don't know exactly what I said. I can't remember, but you have to advertise because if you don't advertise, people don't know you're there. They don't know you have, you know, something to offer. You don't want somebody to say to you, oh, um, I would have had my teeth cleaned with you, but I just had my teeth cleaned. I didn't know this was something you were doing, and that's the only insurance that I have for the whole year. That can happen. So let people know ahead of time so they're thinking about you all the time. Okay, step six. You want to think about documentation. So nobody likes that word, but we have to do it. And I'm not just talking about your charts, your um, medical histories, your dental histories, confidentialities, um, consent forms. I'm not even just talking about that. I'm talking about everything. Infection control, MSDS sheets for your chemicals. Every chemical type of thing that you have with infection control, there has to be a sheet on it somewhere. You need to have your own office manual because that's just what we have to do. So don't forget about that. Um, I am excited to say that I have started using um, a software called Simple Practice. I did extensive research trying to find like a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A practice management software that looked nice, that did not have too much stuff that I didn't need, um, and that didn't have issues every half an hour. You know, I have worked in many many, many offices and every office that I've been in, their software has has issues of some kind. So clearly I wanted something without issues, something simple, but also, you know, something that I can use for my entire practice. So simple practice is amazing. Like I can 
write my chart notes. I can send um, the medical history and the dental history online. Uh, I can submit to the insurance company. I can um, print out, I'm just trying to think of all the stuff that I can do. I can print out um, invoices. So if the patient hasn't paid or if they want to know how much things will cost uh, beforehand, I can print them off an invoice. Um, it's just, it is huge. You can create your own template. So it's just an, an amazing thing. Um, in fact, I go through actually the whole um, simple practice software in the mobile RDH um, um, Academy because it's so huge, but it's also very easy to use if that makes any sense. So if you need help with that, let me know, but it is amazing. But initially, if you're not sure you want to do something like that, there's no harm in doing paper charts, um, paper medical and dental histories, but I tried that for one patient and I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm not organized enough. This is not gonna work for me, but it might be perfectly fine for you. Okay, step seven, insurance. So do you want to submit to insurance on the patient's um, behalf and or do you want to direct bill? So then that way the patient isn't paying you out of their pocket. So that is something that patients always prefer. And then that way the insurance pays you. But see, I don't like doing that because in my opinion, it takes too much time. You have to pay extra to offer that extra convenience for your patients. And what if the insurance doesn't cover everything? Is the patient actually going to pay you? Are they going to pay you the difference, yes or no? Um, you should always ask for the difference up front anyway, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, are they going to pay you the difference? Who knows? So I, how I do it is I just simply ask for payment up front, and then I do say to the patient that I can submit a claim form for them, or I give them a claim form on the spot. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, I use simple practice for this this um, also because it because it does help to keep me nice and organized. But you know, think about it and but it but it is something that you do have to think about. So do you want to make things easier for your patient or easier for you? You will probably get more patients if you if you only ask them for the difference, but then you have to wait to get paid for the insurance. So do you really want to wait that long? Sometimes it can take up to a month. I don't know about you, but that's a long time to not get paid. So that's just why I do it that way. Okay. Step eight, pricing. So a lot of people don't think about this, but you have to think about pricing. So when I first started, um, you know, it's completely normal to think, well, you want to get as, as many patients as possible, so you should op um, offer a lesser expensive price, but you also don't want to do that because you work hard. Um, you could even say, well, even if I get paid, say, $100 per, per, per hour, per appointment, that's still awesome. Considering in dental office per hour, you might be making 30, 35, depending on where you work, 40, 45, you know, who knows. So making $100 sounds pretty darn awesome, right? But keep in mind, if they were to go to the offices, they're being charged at least, um, I don't even know, like $180. So you offering a hundred dollars is is pretty good but you could offer more so how i do it is and i could be changing this who knows but i do charge 120 dollars per person um it depends though if they haven't had their teeth cleaned in five or six years then i do charge about 150 um that's what i've been doing so far um so it just kind of depends for children it's about 65 for teenagers about 100 so it just kind of depends on how much plaque or charter they have and that's always their first question is how much is this going to cost me so i let them know it depends on how much plaque and charter you have um if they tell me it's been a year since their last cleaning then i quote them and say well it will probably be 120 to maybe 130 dollars depending 
on how much black and charter you have. If they say, oh, it's been about five years, then I tell them that it will be at least $150. So think of your pricing. Um, look at the, f um, I look at the ODA fee guide, I believe. So that kind of helps you too, but don't charge not enough, but then don't charge too much either because then you're not going to get patients, right? So, but I'd say most times we tend to charge too little because we want to get in as many patients as possible, but that isn't helping us and our patients will always expect that price. So you kind of want to tell them, well, I'm offering you a service here. I'm coming to you. So this is why I charge this price. If you don't like it, then go to a dental office. You know, I'm not saying say that, but you know what I mean, right? Okay, step nine, tax time. This is, I have to say, the most overwhelming. I get the most questions about this tax time because owning your own practice means you can apply for certain tax credits and certain um, write-offs as well. So your rent, your mortgage, your you know heat, gasoline, your car insurance, your house insurance, your life insurance, all of that you can claim. So I do help you guys with that. This would probably take me three hours to talk about, so I'm not gonna go into it too much here. But start thinking about tax time. At the very least, hire your own accountant and make sure that they understand what type of business you are running um, because not all accountants specialize in something small. They might only deal with like multi-million dollar companies. So make sure you are with somebody who is okay to handle the little stuff and is okay to help you along the way. Next one, last one, step 10 is booking those patients, you guys. So once you have all of those steps, you're all set and you are ready to go. So do not think, oh, I'll wait another couple of months to start booking patients. No. If you took out a loan, you need to start paying that back, right? So start booking those patients. If you need help, I am always here. So I hope this helped you guys. If you are overwhelmed, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, what am I getting myself into? Please keep in mind, these are normal reactions. These are normal um, emotions. If you told me you weren't overwhelmed, if you told me you were not scared, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? You know, you should be. It is normal to be excited, but also a little bit scared at the same time. If you need help, I am always here. And um, if you need me to help you with every single step, which is normal, I am more than happy to do that. I do have the link here for you to the um, Mobile RDH um, Academy. I go through everything and we talk online um, as a group at least once a month, sometimes twice a month because I love to just kind of talk, answer questions, teach. I love all of that. And I do share um, and I do share a real world experience also, the good, the bad, the ugly, the exciting, all of it because I had to go through all of this and I was on my own trying to figure out how the heck I was going to start my own practice and make money and be a good dental hygienist and do a good job for my patients. So it's very overwhelming, but it's totally worth it. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. I do hope that this helped. Let me know if you need anything and I will see you all very, very soon.